Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. Man, this thing's noisy. Well, today we're in damage control. And by that, I don't mean like Joey Salads and that photo of him with his dick in a hot dog bun. It's more like damage from the heat vision effect from last week. And by the way, don't Google that. And if you do, you only have yourself to blame. My God. So, on to today's effect. We already know how to do that heat vision, so let's do some destruction. Just like last week, we need a shot of what you plan to destroy or burn, and you'll also need a copy of Sabre from Video Copilot, as well as some fire assets if you have them handy. Now, you got all that? Well, let's get to work. Okay gang, here we are in After Effects and I've got my comp set up and ready to go. Now, as you can see, I already have my heat vision Sabre effect in that shot. It's not moving at the moment, but we'll get into animating that in a sec. Our first step here is to give the heat vision a path to follow. Or to put it another way, we need to create our heat damage trail. That way we can animate our heat vision and make it look like it's creating this damage. So for now, we'll lock our heat vision layer and turn it off. So in order to create the damage, let's head up, add a new solid, let's call it damage. And when you're done, click OK. Our next step with our solid selected is to head up, grab the pen tool and draw a mask in the shape you want your heat damage to take. I think I'll do just a slightly curvy line, like so. There we go. From there, let's head over to Presets, User Presets, and we'll add either Heat Damage or Heat Damage Noisy. I've included these down in the description, so just download them and install them. Now guys, just grab whichever one you think works better for your shot. The main difference being that one has a lot of distortion added, whereas the other one is a bit more smooth and less crazy. And hey, you can always go up to Sabre and make your own too. But for this example, I'm just going to use the noisy preset. Bam! There we go. Now gang, if it looks too thick, you can always jump into the custom core settings and bring the start and end sizes down as well. Just a little quick tip there. Okay, so our next step is to animate the end offset. So I'll make sure I'm at the start of my comp, bust that end offset down to 15%, because honestly, I like there to be a little bit of it in the start of the shot. And then I'll hit the stopwatch right now. Jump right to the end of the comp and bust that offset back up to 100%. If we check out a preview, that's our animation all done. Whew, now that was hard work. Now before we move on, let's change the transfer mode on that damage layer to add. Now onto the next step, and that's adding some fire assets to our damage to better sell the effect. Now guys, you will need some fire assets from either say, Action VFX, Action Essentials 2, the Rody Polis free fire assets, or basically wherever you want. It doesn't really matter where they're from as long as you have them. The first asset I'll add to the scene is this torch fire right here. As you can see if I click on it, it's just a simple torch fire. So let's drag and drop that into our comp and change the transfer mode to screen. From there, I'm gonna skip to the midway point of our comp and then position it on the end of our damage layer like so. You may need to scale it down too. That looks a little better. From there, I'm gonna hit the stopwatch on position and skip ahead a few frames and you guessed it, shift its position to remain on the end of our damage. When we get to the end of the comp, we'll make our way back down, shifting that position until we get to the start of the comp. Now guys, the reason I started in the middle of the comp was simply to get a better idea of where I wanted that position to be. Now when we're done, we'll just turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer, and as you can see, we have that little fire element stuck to our damage layer. I know it's not much, but adding real fire to this really helps to sell the effect a lot better. Next step, sparks. So if I click on this clip from Action Essentials 2 called Welding Ceiling 01, you can see I have these welding sparks. And guess what? We're gonna animate them the exact same way as our fire. Move them into position on the end or around that area. Hit the stopwatch on position and maybe rotation if you feel like it, and just follow along. Not necessarily frame by frame, but just making sure it sticks to its position. And just keep going until we're all done. The only difference being, this time around, we're not gonna use any motion blur, because we wanna see those sparks nice and clear. Alrighty, our next step is to add some embers to the shot. Now gang, these are the exact same embers I used last week for the heat vision effect. So if you have them, just grab them again. All we're going to do is position them in place sitting around the damage path like so. There we go. And if you, like me, have a curved line, you can just grab the pen tool up here and just mask around the bottom of the line like so. That way we don't have that bottom hard edge exposed and looking weird. And if you like, you can also duplicate those embers, scale them up, and just jump up to effect and add a quick camera lens blur like so. 
You may also need to adjust that mask since we scaled it up. There we go. All this really does is just add a little bit of extra depth. It's up to you whether you do it, I just think it's pretty. If we check out a preview now, it's looking pretty good. But we ain't done. Our next step is adding some scorch marks or burn marks that follow along our damage path. This is also pretty easy. If I head over to the project window, you can see we have a still named Damage. This is also from Action Essentials 2. And all we're going to do is head to the end of the comp, drop that image file all the way down the bottom so it just sits on top of our footage layer and change the transfer mode to Multiply. Now for my taste, it looks a little bit harsh, so I'm going to head up to Effect, Obsolete and add a Fast Blur, and crank it to say 2, just to soften it just a tad. I'm then going to scale it down and then position it right at the start of our heat trail. From there, I want the burn marks to last the whole damage path. So I'll hit Ctrl D to duplicate it, move it along the damage path, hit R, maybe rotate it slightly, duplicate it again, maybe scale and rotate this one, and just keep duplicating the image file until we reach the end of the damage path. So now, as you can see, we've got our scorch marks, but there's one problem. They're static and we need them to appear with our heat damage. So here's how we do that. Select all of the burn images, and then we'll right click and select pre-compose. And then we'll change the transfer mode on that one to multiply. Next, let's head to the start of the comp and let's head up, grab the pen tool and draw a mask obscuring those scorch marks completely, making sure you have enough points across this edge right here, just like me, because our next step is animating this mask path. To do that, collapse down the mask menu Let's feather it out, say, 100 pixels. And hit the stopwatch on Mask Path. We'll then move forward roughly in chunks, adjusting the edge of our mask to marry up with the edge of our damage. You don't have to get too fancy and go frame by frame, but once you're done, it should look like this. Nice, we are getting there. Let's unlock and turn on our heat vision and drag it back up on top. I'm also going to duplicate our damage layer and change the top iteration to screen to give it a little bit more glow, a bit more body. If I turn it on and off, you can see that it looks much better. Now, all we have to do is animate our heat vision to follow the damage path. To do that is pretty simple. Just head to the start of the comp if you're not already, collapse the mask path down on our layer, hit the stopwatch on mask path. We can then select the endpoint on both masks right here and move them down to the start of our damage path. We'll then move forward, adjusting both endpoints of the heat vision to marry up with the end of our damage. And if you've done it correctly, it should end up looking like this. Now just like with our damage layer, I'm also going to duplicate our heat vision layer just to thicken it up a bit. Much better. Now gang, our last couple of steps here are just cherries on top. You don't need to add them if you don't want. The first of these is a light rays at the point of the heat vision hitting that wall. So let's head up, add a new adjustment layer, head to effect, generate and add CC light rays. We can then hit the stopwatch on center and just follow that path once more. Jeez, I'm sounding a bit like a broken record at this point. And if you want to add a little bit more of a blowout, you can totally crank up that intensity too but I think I might just leave it as is. Finally, I'm embracing lens dirt a little bit more and more as it adds a cool glint to your shot that otherwise isn't there. And it just so happens actionvfx.com had a bunch of them to download for free. So if you like, head over there and check those out. So I've got one of those dirt lens stills in the project window. So I'm just gonna drop that on, scale it down and change the transfer mode to add. I might also grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask, limiting it so it only takes up half the frame just so it doesn't overwhelm the shot. As always, don't forget to hit F and feather it out a crap load too. Now you may have noticed my shot was moving and to do that, all I did was select everything, pre-compose it, and then I scaled it up a little bit and animated the position like so. Very easy, and if we check out a preview, that is another shot mm, done. Now before I go guys, I just want to explain how I made the smiley face in the final teaser shot, because it's easy. All I did was skip any animation of the layers. That's it. 
all the steps are exactly the same. You can feel free to add some more smoke and fire elements to this shot to sell it better, but at the end of the day, it's your shot and I ain't your mama. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. So that's my take on animating damage from Superman's heat vision. As far as I know, there are plenty of tutorials on heat vision itself, but no bastard ever deals with the damage caused. So you're welcome gang. Now guys, stay tuned to the channel as I'll be debuting our vlog show shortly. It'll mostly revolve around filmmaking, movie talk, and basically whatever I feel like talking about that day. It'll be a little more informal than film learning, but I'll also talk about it more when it launches. It's really just a way to interact with you guys a little more and talk a little more about everything that goes on in this big old room. As always gang, if you enjoyed the episode, please like and share it. If you're new, give that subscribe button a high click. Follow me on all the social media nonsense up there. And until next time, keep learning.